welcome <laughs> to Binary <laughs> Jazz. It's no less funny when we all know it's coming, is it? No, it's not. It's, or no. no less annoying. Yeah, that's that's a thing. That's the thing. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm distracted. Yeah, we're good. Uh, hi, uh, welcome to Binary Jazz. Uh, it's a podcast with a bunch of people that, that are definitely not staring at GitHub. Um, uh, I'm Chris, Jazz Sequence on the Internet. I am here with my friends Gary, Binary Gary on the Internet, and Allison, Allison Plus on the Internet. And we uh, answer questions that are submitted to us by our many listeners uh, who have questions on the internet that they want answered. That's what we do here on Binary Jazz. We, we are uh, a, a, a advice show. 100%. We're a fine-tuned machine. Finely, finely tuned advice show. Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, well, should I submit a question or can I just ask one here? Directly? You can just ask one, Gary. I have this um, poster of Atlantis that I have magneted over my um, breaker box that has often been in the background of, of uh, videos. And I would like to have it framed. Um, and I'm struggling, but I have not had it framed yet because I'm struggling with, do I want to pay for an enormous frame that centers it and makes it look super important, but really just serves to cover the breaker box? Or do I have it framed in the appropriate size frame with no you know, super extra matting that makes it look you know, less important? That's where I am. That's the question. What do I do? Do I use this as an opportunity to cover the breaker box, or do I say frame this the correct way and find something else to cover the damn breaker box, Gary? Um, if, open to your thoughts. If if the goal is to cover the breaker box, why do you want to cover the breaker box? <laughs> well, because when I sit over there, it's, just, it, it's well. Let's let me show you. What else can you, you cover the breaker box with? I mean, anything. Here's the breaker box, and see like how beautiful it is with this like you know. Torn up okay. a little wall there. No, I think I think you should. I mean, I feel like if you you also need access to the breaker box. Right, right. <laughs> well, yeah. but if I just put like a little like pin up there. Yeah. Right? If you and hook it, it, if you hook yeah. it to it's something, also not straight, which is cool. I don't know if you can tell that, but it's like slants a little. If it, if yeah, if so, if it's in a frame, mm -hmm. and it is hanging, mm -hmm. whatever size that means to cover the breaker box. If you don't mm -hmm. want to look at the breaker box, that is the thing that you should do. I just feel like this view, a little like, like uh, unprofessional. I mean, I say as I'm kicked back in like a comfy chair. So maybe, maybe it actually doesn't matter. Maybe I'm overthinking this. And maybe the answer is like, just leave the magnet. It's holding it in place. No, you should frame it. Okay, I will frame it. <laughs> I mean, if it's possible. <sighs> yeah to have a magnet that is strong enough yeah to hold a framed picture yeah uh that can i don't have any problem like hooking that can attach can, it that can attach the breaker box that would be cool too or even just a strong magnet that is enough to support the wire in the back of the frame because the frame i mean this thing weighs very little i was thinking like a very thin black border and then just a nice mm -hmm. crisp white mat behind it or going crazy be really nice to have like a star field behind it <laughs> Probably just white. Ooh, I like that. Some framer would get really excited about that idea. Well, maybe I need to find the local framer that'll get excited about it and be like, "Here's what I want to do. Let's make some magic happen." Well, you definitely, <laughs> need, to, money you definitely need to frame it because right now it's like dorm room vibes. Yeah, got it. <laughs> That's totally fair. I uh, not what I'm going for. And uh, and my sister um bought me this. Uh, there was, uh, I don't remember if the create, there's a good story behind this. I'm glad we're having this conversation and we should, we should appreciate this. I need to look and see, I think the name like in the corner, or I should just ask her, um, uh, uh, artist who was doing like, did, um, four shuttles, uh, person of color. Uh, and so was saying like, Hey, like before Christmas I was like, Hey, go ahead and like retweet this. And, uh, my sister retweeted and I was like, dang, that is just beautiful. Cause I've seen Atlantis in person and I Atlantis was the first shuttle I saw launch in person. I've seen where it's stored in Kennedy space and I have like a, an emotional relationship with that spacecraft. So, uh, when she sent it to me and I opened it, I was just like, you know, I was very moved by it. So it was, it was very, a very thoughtful gift. 
so yes. Well, then it frame. definitely deserves a frame. Yeah, it yeah. definitely deserves a frame then. And it's a great print, so like. Yeah. Oh, it is. I mean, it's look, look, look just it, like the power it feels like, oh. I, don't, I, don't, I, feel like, I feel like I need to represent it better because <laughs> as the shuttle breaks through, like, I mean, look at you that. Viewer, now, we're now looking at a poster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, those of you uh, who are audio only, we are looking at Gary's poster of the Atlantis uh, shuttle. Um, I, yeah, I think it would be super cool uh, if you got one of those super strong magnets and found a way to mount those magnets onto the back of the frame so that you didn't actually need to punch a hole in the wall, that it just attached to the breaker box, and then but it completely hid the breaker box. And then you could just, when you needed to access it, you just bunk, lift it off. Um, well, for that matter, it could be that they bunk. are... Um... Um, it could be that they are. Uh, if they My favorite part center. of Disenchantment is the fact that they do uh, their own sound effects when they're doing things. Is there um, a new season out? Yeah, there is. Yeah. I knew there was one coming, and I've been struggling with what to watch on Netflix. <laughs> so, so like, so like, uh, uh, what's the stupid demon's name? He'll be like, he'll be like, <laughs> 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 that's that's the best thing is that they, there's no they don't use foley they just they just speak <sighs> their their foley sorry yeah, i interrupted you gary very if you're looking for something bright and cheery to watch uh we're, we're watching ozark <laughs> i don't know much about ozark but i know it's not bright and cheery um yeah we uh we we watched the documentary on netflix about bill wallace and uh from that we went into this horrid show on Apple TV Plus. I can't remember the name of it, but the I, the premise. I was just explaining the premise to my oldest. He was like, "What? That's crazy!" And the premise is that you have like one set of memories at work, and then when you leave work, you have your external memories. So you basically have an inner person at, at work and an outer person. Uh, oh, I know. Oh, it's so dark. It's so uncomfortable. But I thought the whole series, the whole season, was there. We got three episodes in are totally engaged. You're like, oh, next episode comes out on Thursday. Hmm. <laughs> Damn it. Because like, is it's... that is that the new thing that they're pushing in my face? Hold on, uh, that's up. like M Night Shy Shyamalan Shush Shush. I uh, I you know what? The director I don't know. or producer or something. Let me see if I can find it. It's uh, Severance, is what it's called. Severance, yeah, that's the one. That's that's M Night Shyamalan. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's maybe it's not uh, M Night Shyamalan. Let me see if I can find Severance. And it's on Apple TV, you said? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is M. Night Shyamalan? Uh, no. Yeah, it is on Apple TV, is what I was Got saying. It. Okay. Um, we're, we're confirmed it is on Apple TV. Yes. <laughs> it's, for what it's worth, too, I'm not somebody who, like, really gets excited about... Ben like, Stiller the... is executive producer. Great visuals. Uh, but this has them. There are some just striking visuals. Yeah, no, there's a different thing that's M. Night Shyamalan, that Shyamalan, however you say yeah. his last name, uh, that is uh, on Apple TV. But there's not this. This is uh, Ben Stiller. Oh, it's so, like, so dark. Um, and so to counteract Good to it, know. We've also you know, been like, rewatching. Do you have something that's Night like Keeper. a palette cleanser that you IT crowd. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. IT crowd, which is so dumb. <laughs> it's great. We're on season four uh, of The Good Place that we're mm. kind of sort of watching with the kids mm. uh, when they deign to to join us uh, <laughs> after after they rapidly consume their their dinner. Um, my daughter is is into it, or she'll stay and watch most things with us. But but my son is far more interested in shoving food into his face and then escaping upstairs so that he can milk the most out of the remaining time he has on the computer that he can. So is your, what time, you eat, do you eat a late dinner as a family? We have been eating late dinners as a family because um, just schedules. Yeah, we, we eat a very early dinner because schedules. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's certain things that we can't do early because on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Erin has Ariel's uh, at 7.30. So she leaves at seven and doesn't get back until like nine. Um, so we can't really eat before that because you don't want to eat before doing that, before flipping upside down and doing lots of really, like, unless you want to vomit on the floor. Um, 
I mean, it's and a different on, type of performance. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, and then on Wednesdays is D&D, and we usually end around 8, but after 8, there's, like, people hang out for a little bit. Uh, and also, like, you know, unless we've, like, crock-potted something, um, then we don't necessarily have something, like, ready to go. So I'll need to, like, at least have some amount of time to microwave something or whatever. Oh, I have to tell you all on the trip I pulled my parents were in town this weekend. I, I'm Googling something, so I don't describe this incorrectly. Okay, it was. Um, I, uh, I made chili. And so, you know, my parents are going to expect ground beef and chili. So Thursday morning before they came into town, I went out and bought a pound of impossible beef. Impossible beef? That's what it's called, impossible meat. Impossible meat. Yes, but the ground beef patty they Yep, had. I've had yeah, uh, patties home. or just the straight ground? Just the brick. Yeah, the brick. The, the it sounds so great. A brick of meat. Yep, a brick. Yeah. Yep, brought that home, tossed it in the in the pan, uh, told Rhonda and no one else and made the chili that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, like no one knew any better. I mean, yeah. Not in chili. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for yeah. sure not in chili. Um, yeah. I, I've i used, so I've done both uh, Impossible and Beyond. And my preference for as far as flavor is beyond yeah um i feel like impossible tastes a little bit more like middle school uh school lunch uh, burger yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean it's not it's not that bad it definitely tastes meaty it definitely doesn't taste bad but it definitely has more of that like this isn't the best um whereas whereas beyond is a lot better if you're gonna work if you're gonna you know Drop it in fast food replacements. It's probably the ideal. Yeah, flavor. yeah. You don't want it to taste too good. <laughs> Something. Um, um, but the the benefit that I've seen because I, I I've gotten Impossible as patties, and I've also gotten it in like just the ground, and mm -hmm. I end up using um, the burger patties as like sort of like like meatballs anyway. Yeah. Um, so I'll get, I'll get the patties and then I'll like in, in the frying pan, I'll like chop them up into tiny pieces and then toss them into, um, you know, pasta sauce or something. Um, yeah. and, uh, and not having to do that was nice. <laughs> I, I did find like the, I didn't really like how it cooked. Mm. Um, but I also don't know because I started with like, it wasn't totally thawed. So I'm not sure that that wasn't part yeah. of the reason that I did get some like more sticking in the pan than I expected, but yeah, it does stick. It yeah. wasn't significant. It could have. I also it really like. I start with frozen ground beef as well. So I also really like the Beyond uh, sausages. Mm. Um, they have a spicy like Italian sausage, and they have uh, like a normal, like Polish sausage sort of thing. Do you have a favorite um, breakfast sausage? No. Okay. Katie was looking for one and we went and looked at the both the refrigerated and the frozen section at our local like decent grocery store and they had one that was like apple maple mushroom and I think she was like um I don't think it's gonna work for me dad I'm like well, let's try it you know but she's like no and then in the frozen <laughs> section there was nothing so, which is fine I mean she wanted like sausage like links there's yeah, a good sausage patty yeah. she likes but I get it you know yeah, I haven't found a really good sausage of that variety, um, like a yeah, like a breakfast sausagey thing. I've had like the we just use the Beyond ones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I would do too. And that that's what I often I'll toss it into like you know the omelets that we make. Here, here's where she likes it. So when we do breakfast for dinner, um, we will often do um, like. Here's, here's some scrambled eggs. Here's um, uh, like, you know, bacon or sausage or whatever. And she's like, I really want a sausage link. And sausage mm -hmm. patties are fine. They're close enough. But she really wants, she's really like hankering for a sausage link. Mm -hmm. So I will keep looking. There's a place downtown I need to go poke my head in and ask. They, they are, uh, there's a restaurant in downtown Concord that's a uh, uh, full vegan menu. So I feel like they might have some ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Our vegan restaurant also sells things, so yeah. sometimes you can just. Yeah, I wonder if this place does because we've only ever done like, uh, like, uh, DoorDash. So. Yeah, there's a um, in there. There's a place by us that that um, makes all their own cheese, hmm. and so mm -hmm. they'll sell 
the cheese that they make which is pretty cool we haven't we haven't actually gotten that but we've had, i mean we've had the cheese on stuff when we've gotten stuff there um by the way we did the thing where we were walking into town and then we realized all the signs had changed <laughs> because oh, of the filming that's happening. yeah yeah because so we were like i was just like what's that i was like is that a new they even there's like a historical sign for the the town and they put a thing over it for the history of the fake town and then the post office is all different and i was just like i can't handle this it's just too weird <laughs> i love that uh in our slack uh, Allison posted an article and there was a picture of an alien uh, <laughs> and I'm like I think I might notice that walking downtown but I but like only with like 75 percent certainty there's a 25 percent <laughs> chance I might walk past that person and be like in this town who knows <laughs> yeah yeah oh love small town <laughs> yeah, I, didn't also, get, I didn't get that much to context to what I was posting I was just like this photo works <laughs> I, I I'm like all right was that was that the article i think that was the article that was that was like really more about like what the shooting schedule was so yeah, like i went into it, it <laughs> i went into it like and on monday this street is going to be closed i'm like cool <laughs> it's for locals it's the lady smith chronicle <laughs> I love that. I love. I don't, know, I don't know what it's called here, but I love that newspaper, and I follow it on Twitter in Concord because it's like, yes, the road closures are important. Um, whenever a pipe breaks, like, oh, you're darn right, I know about it. Um, <laughs> it's like there's another there, there's, accident. <laughs> there was, there's been like numerous accidents down by the harbor, and we we oh. started thinking it's like the town for murder. She wrote, or it was like, what's going on down there? <laughs> What are they doing in there? My favorite is when there's like some kind of property that's being developed and all they can do is describe it as the old dot, 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 as though that's meaningful for anybody that's been like <laughs> not been here for a decade, right? We, we were getting directions for someone. He was just like, you know, it's where the Sears used to be. And I was just like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Have I told you about the cemetery at the mall here? Cemetery at the mall. Oh, yes. This is so cool. But not like cool. I would watch cool. that show or read that book. <laughs> is this so, is this like the the lead in to like a horror uh, a teenage horror movie where they get locked in the uh, the mall the and the zombies the mo zombies be. from from the the cemetery that's apparently at the mall just like uh, invade the mall and they they have to like fight them off in the mall is this is this so, what that movie is no so I'm Concord, scripting no. the entire thing now yeah it's okay it's Concord is somewhat of an old old town in the south like a lot of uh, a lot of churches here like claim their start shortly after the Civil War um, to give you an idea of age around here. And so the interstate goes north of Old Town Concord, but Concord had huge city limits. And so back in the like late 70s, early 80s, when uh, malls were popping up everywhere at this exit, it's like, well, this is where we're going to develop a mall. Um, and it was nothing. I mean, it was not nothing. There was like a family cemetery and lots of open land and, you know, uh, some developer finally came in and made an offer to the family. He was like, okay, but part of the terms are uh, the family cemetery has to say exactly where it is. And so when they finished their planning, it turned out that it was going to be right in a section of the mall. So the mall is like, if you look overhead, it's like a rectangle, except there's a part cut out. And that is, it's got a fence around it. And that's the cemetery. And so the mall is responsible for cemetery upkeep. And the family can still come and visit family headstones. But you're in the parking lot and it's like, you over and you're like, oh, we're by the food court. And you can walk in the, the Chick-fil-A, but just around this brick wall, it's the cemetery. It's maybe like so fascinating. 25, 30 headstones. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Are people, uh, so it's it's like a heritage graveyard, not new people aren't being buried there. I don't believe so, um, but it doesn't, I mean, it looks like there is space for that. <laughs> Should like, they want? <laughs> I, I, I definitely, I definitely want to do in. something with this as, as the, as the, the, the setup. Yeah, this is definitely, yeah. this is definitely going into fiction of some variety. Oh, take They're it! And I'm happy to provide photos. Or late at night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> uh, I, and I would assume that like the gating probably had to be there to keep people from you know, doing whatever. Yeah. Um, it's it's this and and of course like you know this mall came up and the Sears was there and I don't even know what else but I mean you know now the mall is like it's not what it was and of course we're new in town so we never saw it for what it was we just see it as, as it is now and it's like there's the there's the movie theater but like 
just go to the movie theater these days, right? Like gross. And, uh, you know, so there's not a lot happening there, but I do the first, when I first read about it, I'm like, all right, kids field trip. <laughs> <laughs> How interesting is this? And they're like, it's a little weird, dad. And you're like, that's yes, my plan. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, Charlotte was four today. And I realized saying that um, if we had, if Chris had not discovered our counting error, I think today would have been like, how are we in season three when <laughs> <laughs> I think today would have been the day we would have been like, Something about that too. <laughs> rotten in Denmark, yeah. <laughs> I was like, 2018, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it only feels like a lot longer or something. <laughs> well, she's one of my favorite guest stars that pops in. Yeah, today, uh, Rhonda, um, uh, my sister-in-law's out of town, so they had to go take care of her cat. And they went to, there's a Krispy Kreme that has... Um, you know, Krispy Kremes that have like the conveyor set up that does like the local supply. You can look in the glass. So that's the donut factory as far as Charlotte is concerned. So they got to go to the donut factory, which magical. And then the mall, not the mall with the cemetery, like the outdoor mall, but not really. I don't know. There's another mall, which <laughs> I, I love that as the differentiation of malls, because usually it's like, oh, the one with the movie theater, the one that doesn't or like the one with the I don't know. The first thing that came to my mind was hot dog on a stick. So that shows something yeah. about me. <laughs> one that doesn't or something. One with the Dyson spheres. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where the Sears um, used to be. <laughs> right. No Sears at this one because it's too new to have a hat of Sears. Uh, but there is a Build-A-Bear there. So Charlotte got to Build-A-Bear today. Nice. Which if you're four is like pretty rad. You know? Well, you're basically mm-hmm. getting a new best friend. <laughs> like, I mean, creating. For the next you know? two years <laughs> oh if it lasts that long it's a great investment i mean I, whatever the, you know great the joy of building it today in the next few days perfect whatever it's great sounds like a great um, birthday yeah yeah and uh that's why my, why my parents were in town for the weekend it was fun oh it's good to see him but good to see him leave yep we have a traditional uh birthday cake slash dessert slash something that you make? No, we always do. We jump from weird thing to weird thing. Nice. So it also falls that like Charlotte's birthday is today. Katie's birthday was last Sunday. Right in the middle is Georgia, the younger cat. So Katie proposed we should have a catacorn party. So, you know, we had unicorns and cats and some catacorns and I wore a, a unicorn thing for much of the day we did like a small outdoor party on saturday and invited some um one family from 4-h uh and then um the choir director from the episcopal church the ronda likes and uh yeah yep so my niece uh, calls the horn of a unicorn the corn okay yes and so i've started kind of adopting that whenever it's come up i'm like Cause like we were playing unicorns or something and she's like, no, no, your corn goes here. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> sure. Unique. And that's, yeah, one. Yeah. Otherwise it'd be a rhinoceros Yeah. Uh, or something. Triceratops. I'm not sure which. Triceratops. Um, yeah. So I, I put it on when people started showing up and just forgot it was there. So I went to scratch my head two hours later. <laughs> like, yes. yes. I, I mean, I, I don't, it, it's fine. It's fine. Wow, it is the season for birthdays then. Yeah, sort of, sort of, sort of kind of breaks that way, doesn't it? Um, yeah. Tyler's is in August, so never. Summer kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that everybody's got opinions about when their birthday, like summer kids are like, nobody could ever come to my birthday because it was in the summer and everyone was away or like. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it's, it, we were hoping for like a nice like day, like today, the sun is out. I'm sure you can tell with my side lighting to clear <laughs> off my glasses, but like the sun has decided to embrace us. And uh, Saturday it was still like, it's like 55, 
which would have been okay if the sun was out, but it was 55 with like overcast and like yeah. very humid. It wasn't raining, but it was like threatening to. So I, I had like two heaters on tripods we put outside and I mean, people were allowed to go inside if they wanted, but generally it was like, let's keep the party outside and like, then we can, you know, interact, but also distance and, you know, everyone that came is very uh, responsible, except for my parents. Um, so since we didn't have a topic today, I thought we just covered the topic pretty well. Yeah. Honestly, just an update yep. from Gary. What the hell's going on, Gary? Uh, <laughs> it's Gary's corner. <laughs> I have two things. I have two things that I can steal uh, from my favorite podcast okay. that I listen to. This is my brother, okay. my brother, and me. Uh, and your choice. I'm not going to tell you what the what the options are. Yeah. Your choice. Oh shit! Is, is this the segment this, where you never finish a sentence? This or that. And if you if you agree on this or that, I will I will proceed to to bring in whatever the corresponding uh bit from uh is because I, I have two pages i have two tabs open in my browser one of them is yeah. uh for this and one of yeah. them is for that and i know in my i know what they are but uh that. so you have to pick this or that well, that yeah that that yeah that. Is that all on that? Okay, that. Okay, so we Gary have... has an A in his name, and I do, my name starts with A. Okay, great. Uh, okay, that so totally so that is, well. is 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 as WikiHow. So uh, we are going to pick a random, not really that random, uh, WikiHow article, uh, and <laughs> WikiHow. Wiki uh, WikiHow. <laughs> in the last ten minutes, um, uh, we're Does going. Does WikiHow to... exist? Let's take a let's take a breather on. I that. mean, it might. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, this is how to know if a girl likes you. <laughs> Fuck if I know. So uh, many paths, so many options. Uh, she she, she made you a mixtape. <laughs> she, she glances your way, laughs at your jokes, and acts nervously around you. You're not sure if she's flirting, being friendly, or simply uninterested. Let Whether you've had a crush on a girl for ages and are dying to know if, she, if the feeling's mutual, or you just want to know if she likes you for curiosity's sake. What does that mean? For uh, there are a few too. nearly sure, foolproof that signs. That a little bit, honestly. In nearly in foolproof signs that the girl likes you. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, ask her if she likes you and she says yes, that that's a good that's a good clue. That's not step one, or it's not no. the first way. Uh, Remember, we're on Wiki <laughs> Hell right now. <laughs> Understanding body language cues. Uh, look for open body language. When a girl likes you, she will face in your direction. If a girl has her torso turned towards you in an open manner, this means that she is confident talking with you. If she has a closed body position, namely crossed arms or legs, she may be shy or nervous to talk to you, or she may be simply creating a barrier to sync signal that she is uninterested. Just as an aside, in my head, I'm substituting she for your mechanic. It's making it a lot more fun thinking about my mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have so many me? issues with this. I, I yeah. really this. <laughs> Pay attention to eye contact. If, if a girl likes you, she will tend to hold her gaze on you for a few seconds or glance down the moment your eyes make contact with hers. I feel like this only happens in movies. The the whole like looking at each other and then looking down. Maybe it's been a long time since I've I've experienced that. Can we just say that like making eye contact and facing someone when you're talking to them are very low bars. <laughs> You were you were not aggressively like uh, scaring this person. Like is I think is my takeaway. So uh, when a girl likes you, her pupils might dilate. Though this will be hard to tell. Great, she takes drugs. Got it. <laughs> this is horrible. Uh, 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 three. Notice if she tr touches you or tries to get closer. When a girl likes you, she will often try to touch you, as this is a noticeable yet still subtle way to flirt. It allows a girl to size up how responsive you are. She may touch your arm when you say something funny, accidentally, in quotations, <laughs> brush your shoulder or hands with hers, or gently place her hand on your knee. I feel Man. like placing your hand on someone's knee is almost is basically first base. My like... dental hygienist, <laughs> my dental hygienist likes me. Especially if you're just standing there. <laughs> uh, all right, so then we have uh, pay attention to whether she randomly hugs you. Uh, this is especially significant if her random hugs are reserved mostly for you. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, see if she mirrors your moves. If a girl imitates you, for example, if you run your fingers through your hair, I notice she I notice her do the same a few seconds later. She may be subconsciously mirroring your mu movements. That's uh, what people do anyway. Right. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> um, notice if she's playing with her hair. 
My mechanic walks out though and is like, "Hey, here's your air filter." Like, <laughs> uh, look for signs of nervousness or fidgeting. Um, notice she smiles around you. There's a whole bunch of things. Okay, method two, uh, picking up on Wait, other that was just signs. Method one. Yeah, that was, that was just method just one. Method one. Yeah. That was just method one. Uh, method two, picking up on other signs of flirting. Be receptive to compliments. Uh, if a girl compliments me, she could very well like you. Uh, this may be her way of making you feel desired. She might say things like, you have amazing eyes, or "So you're so athletic, do you play any sports? Neither of which have ever happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> or, or making conversation. Or making conversation, yeah. <laughs> Acknowledging existence. Acknowledge, acknowledge Obser existence, making eye contact, facing. Yep, yep. Uh, observe her friend's reactions. If you see most of her friends glancing back at you and smiling or giggling, this probably means she has told her friends about you and they're in the know. Also, or... it means you're 14 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of this stuff <laughs> falls in that category. Notice her style. Uh, when a girl likes you, she'll often try to impress you with her style. Yeah, yeah, of uh, course, naturally. She may choose to wear slightly revealing clothes or put on lipstick to catch your eye. Um, or, potentially, gold flake lip balm. <laughs> gold flake lip balm, definitely, mm -hmm. yeah. It's Look true, for... it's true. A woman's appearance is always for other people. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, okay, so, uh, I'm skipping so down. I can't handle it. Uh, skipping down, a look for damsel in distress Wait. moments. What? what number is this? This is seven. I skipped down to I skipped down to seven. Step seven in method two. I don't I don't yeah. Um, dental method distress two. moments. If a girl likes you, she might pretend to be mildly in a mildly vulnerable situation and test your response. Uh, you can test her interest by asking her for help. Uh, notice how she acts around others. Then we have uh, method three. Finally, we're getting to the being direct about your interest. Should be method. One. Yeah, but we I mean, didn't. It, the first step is not to ask uh, if she likes you. The first step is to smile at her and make eye contact. <laughs> yeah, strike up conversation. Uh, yeah. Be attentive. These are just like things you do with normal humans. <laughs> These are just like actual, just conversational listening techniques. Here we go. Here we go. Method three. Step four. Suggest that you like her. And then it has a link to another WikiHow article, which is tell a girl you like her without being rejected. <laughs> which might, might have been the one I should have picked. <laughs> um, I, then... I am not, based on this, I'm not hopeful that that one have, would have much better content. No. Um, uh, uh, yeah, then ask her out is the next step. And then be receptive to her signals. Back off if you get the sense that she actually doesn't engage or uh, doesn't actually does actually doesn't like you or engage in a flirty banter. If you sense there is mutual interest, if you've gotten this far and you haven't figured out that she doesn't like you, probably you're the you're the target audience for this wiki how article. <laughs> A board game we're not in Candyland. like if you've gotten this far like... i like that you said Candyland because i was thinking like a much more complex Shoo! board game like risk or like back to one mars or something but it's not the game no, of life Land. have you played the new version of that by the way no. uh, of Candyland? uh life no, no. you get like a debit card that goes into a little portable atm thing and they uh, still make you get married um I don't it was always one of the forced. timeline things you had to hit. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's, I'm trying to remember. There, you stop at it, and I think you spin for it, hmm. maybe? Hmm. I don't recall. Do, do you have, does it spin for the number of uh, partners that you have? Or <laughs> No, it's like if it falls in this range, yes, no, I don't remember. We also had the Star Wars version of life, which I enjoyed more, because it was basically like the path of being, like, more I'm so torn on Star Wars these days. I don't even know why. Yeah. I just feel like it oversimplifies everything. Like, why isn't the, why, the world were Star Wars? But it's more, it, it's like the, it's like the crappy version of Star Trek. <laughs> Those frightening words. <laughs> Not Star Wars. I mean, the world is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then there's community questions. 
community Q and A for this article. <laughs> yes. Who wrote uh, this? And what qualifications do they have? I I think that the general uh, idea is that there are no necessarily uh, qualifications for a lot of these uh, WikiHow articles. Um, uh, do 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 do. What's a good one? Um, oh wait, where's where's the one? Yeah, what what does it mean if she says you're weird or laughs at your stupid jokes? This definitely happened to me. I was I was definitely weird <laughs> in telling lots of stupid jokes. What does it mean? What does it mean, Allison? I don't know. It's the foremost expert. Being a girl, <laughs> you are expert on on what, what I mean, it could go it could go violently two directions. It could be like Ah, you're weird <laughs> and nervously because there's a sense of danger <laughs> yep 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 um the 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 correct answer or the community responded answer is it sounds like she could definitely be attracted to you your weird can be a compliment if she's laughing or smiling when she says it which is mm. probably true 50 percent of the time so if she you know self, if she self no i don't think weird. on this article that that percentage holds true, Chris. Maybe across the entire world, <laughs> but the person asking this question in this case, I'm leaning with very different eyes. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.